Oh, that's crooked. Ow! Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, Ethan Drew, and we've got a different... Different. We've got a different kind of content coming to you guys today. Um, we're going to be talking about the current situation in TikTok in the tick <laughs> we're going to be talking about the current TikTok music industry and everything that's going on in it as well as me sharing my thoughts with you on some of the things that are going on in the TikTok music industry that's an awkward start to the video but for those of you who don't know me hey I'm Ethan Drew um, I'm a singer. I've been singing for several years. I play several instruments. I play piano, trombone, guitar, and I tinker around on the bass a little bit. And for those that are curious as to what qualifies me to kind of touch on this topic, I am actually a recent member of the TikTok music industry as a whole. More importantly, on the singing side of TikTok. So yeah, if you guys are familiar with my content and you've seen me before, I'm glad to see that you're back. Um, I would appreciate it if you would like the video. Drop a comment down below, even if it's just a smiley face that helps with the algorithm. And uh, yeah, without further ado, let's kind of let's dive into what's going on in the TikTok world as a whole. More importantly, in the music and singing side of things, as well as my thoughts on what's going on. For anyone that has the TikTok app or has an account on TikTok, whether if it's through a desktop computer, laptop, or your phone or an iPad, you may have already stumbled upon a video or videos of people singing. Now, TikTok has become very, very creator friendly over the past few years. Now, for those that weren't here for TikTok before it actually became TikTok, it was actually called Musical.ly, musical.ly, and that app was very bare bones at the beginning of the app, and you couldn't do very much on it, and it was not very creator friendly. It was nothing like YouTube was, where you could make money off of adverts and make a living off of creating content, which now you can, obviously, with TikTok. But we'll get into that here shortly. But now that we're in the era of TikTok where you can add your own sounds, you can record your own music, you can edit audio, put it over video, you can do lip syncs, and you can upload all of your own audio and video onto your own profile. It's incredible. It's incredible to be able to do that. And I'm so happy to have seen the true success of some seriously talented singers on this app. I can name just a few. We've got Lauren Paley, Melinda, Bobby Waters, aka the Bobby Bass. We've gotten some other prominent ones like Jonathan Tilkin. We also have Gabby. And for those that don't know Miss Gabby, she's uh, Gabby Sklar. She is incredible. Um, we also have a few others. If I recall the names correctly, we also have Vinny Marchi, if that's how you pronounce his name, as well as Alexander Stewart, Davide Damonte, Manav Sharma, so many profoundly great singers who have rose to stardom here on TikTok. And it's incredible to see it. I'm so happy to see that these creators are out here living their best life, doing what they enjoy, because music runs through all of us. We, singing runs through all of us, whether we know it or not, whether we realize it or not, it's a huge part of our lives, and to see so many incredible people rise to stardom through this app, it's nothing short of amazing. Of course, it comes with its downsides, though. With the recent rise in popularity of TikTok, has also come a pretty serious wave of not only internet trolls, but just general toxicity and negativity in the not not even necessarily just the TikTok world but the YouTube world as a whole. I personally have experienced this some myself, but I've talked with several creators in the past who have also noticed this 
huge shift towards toxicity and negativity in the internet presence. I don't really understand it, to be perfectly honest with you. I really don't, because these people are creating incredible things. And for anyone to have anything negative to say about it, sure, you're allowed to have an opinion. Sure, you're allowed to share that opinion. I mean, opinions are like butts. We all have them. Some stink worse than others. Excuse me. Just burped on camera. How professional, Drew. Nice job. Anyway, my point here is that there has been a huge surge in negativity and toxicity over here on the TikTok side of things that I've noticed, especially on YouTube as well, but this video is more about the TikTok music and singing culture as a whole. And we're going to kind of walk through some of the stuff that I'm seeing in the industry, and it's, it's sad to see because... There's some incredible work going on in the TikTok side of music and TikTok side of vocals. It's just incredible what we're seeing here. The incredible amount of talent these people have and are putting on display only for people to attempt to tear it down with words. The amount of toxicity people share with each other on a daily basis really blows my mind. I'm going to show you some of the things that I see on the music and singing side of TikTok. And bear with me if this video jumps around a bunch, but this is what I'm going to be this is going to be some just a few examples of what I'm talking about here. So, here's a perfect example. A good friend of mine, Mr. Manav Sharma, he has over 300,000 followers here on TikTok. He is a very talented bass singer. And this being, I have a video pulled up here that was one of his most popular. Actually, it looks like it is his most popular with 14.6 million views. And I wouldn't say it got inundated with toxicity or anything, but there's one comment here that really stood out. And I will blur this person's name out because I don't want to be mistaken for someone that's going on a witch hunt. I'm only merely calling attention to the presence of toxicity here on TikTok. So we're going to take a listen to uh, what Mr. Monov has for us in this little 15-second uh, performance. It's a duet. For those that don't know on TikTok, duetting with singing has been a huge, huge success with a lot of creators and has been the reason a lot of these creators rose to stardom. The duet function inside the TikTok app allows people to do incredible things because you can add your own footage, add your own audio to the original audio of the video that you want to do a duet with. So it, it allows for really cool things like I'm about to show you. So Jonathan Tilkin's original video was him singing the song River. And I don't recall who wrote the song and performed it off the top of my head, but we're going to listen to it with Manov's um, bass in the background. And I'll show you the one comment that I was talking about earlier. So shut your mouth and run me like a river. Shut your mouth, baby, stand and deliver. Holy hands, oh, they make me <laughs> See you one. Like a river, like a river. Shut your mouth and run me like a river. So... Awesome, right? Let's listen to this one more time. So shut your mouth and run me like a river. Shut your mouth, baby, stand and deliver. Holy hands, oh, they make me a sinner. Like a river, like a river. Shut your mouth and run me like a river. So, obviously, there's some talent going on here. You have to be able to sing in the first place to really be able to achieve something like this. Jonathan Tilkin being an incredible voice already. But then you got Monov adding a really nice bass line in here, obviously throwing in that, that brutal C1 in there. Incredible work, my friend. But there's a couple of different comments here that kind of kind of summarize what's going on with some of the music, that's, some of the toxicity that is geared towards singers in the TikTok music industry. So, in the comments here, specifically this one right here, can we hear it without the Melodyne, though, with a laughing face? And 
Monov responded to this saying that he's got live performances with the, with his subharmonics up on his page, and he does. But this is one of the, one of the many examples there are out there of the toxicity going on in the TikTok music industry. Here on the same video, also there's another example of toxicity uh, from this person here. It says, "I refuse to believe that C1 was from his voice." Which, obviously, if you know anything about Bono's content, it most definitely was from his voice. So that's unfortunate that people feel that way. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go find some more more examples of the toxicity we see here on TikTok. Uh, this gentleman or gentlewoman says a bass doesn't have to lower his neck to hit low notes. <laughs> um, to me, I find this comment a little bit ridiculous because it kind of shows the true ignorance that some people have whenever making comments like this. And I do want to address this comment quickly um, in looking at this video. But first, let's actually listen to what's going on in this duet here with Monov. It's incredible work, by the way. Monov, incredible voice. The original singer for this cover that we're about to listen to, um, his account name is Sail North Music. Incredible, incredible tenor singer. And he's got an incredible, velvety, smooth voice for sea shanties. And that's his whole shebang here on TikTok. And he does an amazing job at it. But enough yammering for me. Listen to what we've got going on in this video. And then we'll get some more context for this negative comment over here. Well, me father often told me when I was just a lad, a sailor's life is very hard. The food is always bad. But now I've joined the Navy. I'm aboard a man of war. I'm going to the volume up some. A sailor ain't a sailor anymore. Don't haul on the rope. Don't climb up the mast. And if you see a sailing ship, it might be your last. Just get your civvies ready for another run ashore. A sailor ain't a sailor ain't a sailor anymore. Two cans of beer a day, and that's your bleeding lot. And now we've got an mm. extra one because they stopped the top. So we'll put on our civic clothes, find the pub ashore. A sailor's just a sailor, just like he was before. Don't haul on the rope, don't climb up the mast. And if you see this man a is a genius, might both of them are. Just get your civvies ready for another run ashore. A sailor ain't a sailor, ain't a sailor anymore. Don't haul on the rope, don't climb. Up the mast. Another C1. <laughs> Subharmonics for days. Incredible. Incredible, right? Like, is that not really cool? Um, this person over here doesn't think so. Um, of course, like I said before, everyone's entitled to their own opinions, but the the ignorance in comments like these irritates me. Um, so if, I'm going to give a little bit of insight into what goes on in some of these videos, right? So in videos like this, most of the time it's because what's going on is that whether if it's original music or you're doing a duet or both, the dynamic has shifted to professional audio, making it into TikTok. Whereas it used to be non-professional audio, non-mixed, non-mastered. That is no longer the case. And I totally understand the reasoning for this. T singers want to showcase how good their voice can sound. And there's no better way to do that than with professional mixing and mastering, editing of the vocals to make it sound like it's being recorded in the studio. because. Most of them have an at-home studio and are very capable of doing this. With that said, there is a video that I'm getting ready to pull up that talks about things like this. And I forgot who it was that recorded this video, but I'll be back in just a minute when I find it. Okay, so we've arrived at the video that I was referring to just a minute ago. We're obviously not going to have time to play all of this. But I'm going to play a couple snippets of this just to kind of show you, you know, how, another example of kind of the negativity that's being brought to light through the TikTok music industry. And Miss Gabby Bell here is, I, there's some points that she shares that I agree with, but there's also some that I uh, would like to present a rebuttal for. And also, 
um, I just flat out disagree with. So we're going to listen to just a few clips here and we're going to kind of speak to a few of them as a content creator myself, both on YouTube and TikTok as well. Show you. Since you pushed my love aside, I'm out of my head, hopelessly devoted. Incredible. Discuss. If you're musically inclined at all, or not, you may have noticed that this sounded really, really good. Like, almost... So, yeah, it did sound really good. Um, so far, I'm not seeing the issue. Too good. Like, almost perfect. Like... Big shocker. <laughs> Apologies for the cynicism, but... Big shocker that it sounds almost too good because this audio is, in fact, pitch corrected, mixed and mastered the whole nine yards, EQ'd, EQ'd throughout the nose. It sounds great because it is great. It's supposed to sound like it came from a studio because it probably did come from a studio. Like, the sound wave representation of any of their voices would be a flat, straight line. Almost like it was auto-tuned to smithereens. Maybe that's just- Um, uh, rebuttal to that statement. Auto-tuned to smithereens is a bit of a stretch. Um, there's a difference between auto-tune and pitch correction, folks. And the issue here with her saying that it's auto-tuned to smithereens is- it quite literally isn't because for those of you who do not know what autotune is, it is an extreme version of pitch correction that is taken so far to one extent of pitch correction that it just sounds completely robotic and inhuman. If you want a perfect example of someone who sings with strong autotune, go listen to T-Pain and most of his music. Not to say that he can't sing or, or without autotune, because he most certainly can, but there's a lot of autotune in most of T-Pain's music. It sounds robotic, and the pitch is completely flat and even throughout the entire song on each of these notes. There's some other people that have autotune, but we will uh, save that for another time. Pitch correction and autotune are two different things, but they are achieved in the same way. Autotune is way overdone and sounds robotic. Pitch correction is normal, where it makes those notes sound flat and pretty, but it doesn't do it to the point of making it sound robotic, right? And it may be subjective. You may think that sounding robotic is something that it may sound different to everybody, and, and it may, but pitch correction is right here in the middle, right? You got auto-tune Auto-tune is basically pitch correction gone wrong and gone overboard. Then you have actual pitch correction. I just punched the mic. My bad. Uh, then you have pitch correction here, which where the actual pitch that's being sung by the singer is corrected. Obviously, you're going to have slight variations in pitch when you're trying to maintain one single note because no human is physically capable of holding a single note perfectly without without slight imperfections and you want to sound as best as possible when you're posting for the internet for billions of people you don't want to sound like an idiot you don't want to sound like you're not on your game me personally that that comes as common sense i don't want to sound bad for a huge group of people so a bit of a graph if you want to picture it this way again so no pitch correction at all no modulation of the pitch, no correction whatsoever. Then you have pitch correction, which most levels of TikTok audio and singing are at. Then you have auto-tune, which most are not at, and people claim it to be on most TikTok music. All that to say that um, auto-tune, in the sense that Miss Gabby is, say er, is saying here, it's a bit blowing it out of proportion. Just what their voices sound like. Let's examine another. Ready to know what the people know. Ask them my questions and get some answers. What's a fire and why does it? What's the word? Burn. When's it my turn? Wouldn't I love, love to explore? Let's shore up a bar. 
she's really good. So this one in particular, I examined a bit further. In a music making software, when you record your voice, it shows up like little sound waves like this. A step further, people made plugins for music software where it analyzes the exact notes that you're hitting when you sing. It'll tell me it- All true statements. Um, before I comment on what happened a second ago, just prior to this little explanation bit, she's quite literally mocking the music that's going on, and I don't, I'm not sure that I okay with this. Um, seems a bit dramatic for the point she's trying to get across. Not trying to bash Gabby in any way. Everyone's entitled to have their own opinion, but I'm not sure that I really understand the necessity for mocking singers for using pitch correction software prior to using it in TikTok. But I digress. So she's right about the explanation of the plugins going on here because that's what picture pitch correction does. I'll play a little bit more and then we'll move forward with the actual video itself. Exactly what note I'm hitting right now. And it'll tell me yep. how far off I am from the exact perfect frequency of the note in the form right. of cents. Absolute 100% right. perfect pitch is zero cents. There are 100 mm -hmm. cents in a note before it just becomes the next note up or down. If you've exactly. ever used a guitar tuner before, this is exactly how it works. I, I don't know how to do this. Okay. Uh... As you can see, it's on pitch but varies within a few cents throughout a long, held out note like this, which is not very noticeable and normal, as you're vibrating your vocal cords and the vibrations are different. Sorry for the quick music theory lesson, I hope you remember to take notes because there will be a quiz on Friday. I promise this is useful to understand this. I isolated the vocals from this TikTok, which means I removed the piano music from it. Where is it coming from, by the way? Who is playing the piano? Where is it? Is he just like in the other room because they couldn't fit him on camp? So she's being sarcastic here. I'm sure she has picked up on this already. But this video that she's referring to on TikTok is lip synced. So you're not going to see the piano in frame because they chose not to have it in frame. And the three individuals, Anthony Garjula, Jonathan Tilkin, and the other lady that's in this video, I forgot her name. They're all lip syncing to the audio and the recordings. So, and they're doing it really well, but there's a piano in the background where you, you don't see it in frame. And that's what Gabby's talking about here. Camera in this kitchen corner, like. Take me to church. I'll worship like a dog at the shrine of your life. I'll tell you my sins so you can sharpen your knife. Offer me that deathless death. And good God, let me give you my life. Anyway, when I opened this up in this plugin, it's a little eye-opening. This starting note, this D flat 5, is at the absolute most perfect pitch that it could possibly be. It's at So, again, I, I expect nothing less because we we would expect the singers to be on their game. I expect them to want to present the best possible work to their audience. And for them not to seems like they it seems like they would be destroying the integrity of their own music. Right. If they if you can make it sound better, why would you not? And plus, you, you want to sound as good as you can for millions of people. Right. And with that, we're going to stop talking about that particular video. Gabby, again, if you manage to see this video, I'm not attacking you in any way, shape or form. I'm just opening some eyes as to what's going on here. And I'm also addressing some of the stuff that's going on in the TikTok music industry as well. Um, I do have an issue with some of the things you've said, but I actually take no issue with you whatsoever. So if you're watching this video, don't hate me. Anyway, that's a, that video is another good example of the, I think, misguided and misdirected toxicity and negativity going on in some of these videos in TikTok. And it, it really baffles me how people can be so hateful, but especially in about something that is truly that it, there's something that intertwines us all. Right. And <clears throat> it needs to stop. Um, and I'm not going to sit here and get on a soapbox and preach about how it should stop and then not present a solution, right? I mean, 
I'm not going to sit here and preach about that because I don't really have a phallic solution. I'm not a philosopher. I don't really know exactly how to solve a problem like this, but I can confirm that it's a big issue and it's unfortunate considering the immense popularity that the TikTok music industry has. We've got hundreds of millions, if not billions of people on the TikTok app at this point in its life cycle. And we should be using platforms like this for good. Some people have been pretty seriously misguided in that endeavor. There's another example on someone's, another um, acquaintance of mine, friend of mine in the music industry, particularly on YouTube. One more example of this, and we'll go ahead and wrap this video up, but you'll see what I'm talking about here. He is in the space of music that I am. In some degrees, some of you may know him, Mr. Peter Barber. He came out with a video not too long ago, reacting to a performance of "Zombie by the Chair." Or, um, so he did a reaction and analysis video to a song called "Zombie by the Cranberries," and there is a very iconic, very very iconic, and highly negative comment on that video to the point of. Took this much time to go through and drop this much negativity in one little condensed spot. And I'll show that to you now. And I love Peter. He's a great dude. I consider him a good friend of mine. And we've actually chatted back and forth about the topic of negativity in the music industry. And if you're interested in hearing that conversation, make sure you go check out my most recent podcast with him. It would be podcast 2-2 where he was the second guest on the channel and this is the second podcast I've had with him it was within the last two to three months super chill dude we talked about this topic of negativity as a whole and yeah make sure you go listen to that if you're interested in listening to music and singer podcasts <laughs> but I'm going to blur out the person's username here as well so that way we aren't mistaken for going on a witch hunt but look at the length of this negative comment we're looking at a multi-sentence paragraph several bullet points one run-on sentence and another a whole nother paragraph I'm not even going to bother to try to read all this. If you want, you can pause and read it all yourself. But this comment was so negative that Peter pinned it and personally responded to it himself. Very eloquently, I might add. But this is another perfect example of the hate and toxicity and misguided hatred for singers and what they do in YouTube and TikTok. This is what it looks like, and it's sad to see, like I said earlier. It's, it is what it is. You know, the internet is full of people that, that hate, but I guess life goes on. Now, as for my thoughts on the TikTok music industry as a whole, more specifically the side of TikTok where we sing a lot, and that's primarily the content we do is of, of us singing or duetting, etc. I think it's in a fantastic place, and I think we need to keep trudging forward. There's a lot of haters out there. And for those of us that are in the TikTok singing industry, we really need to be the salt of the earth and be the salt of the TikTok app because there's a lot of us. We're, lo we're all very supportive of each other. We all need to stick together whenever hate comes against us like this. It's, it's really sad to see that it happens, but in spite of all the hate that comes at us, we're moving forward in ways that haven't been seen or recorded ever. And it's incredible to see the amount of success that we've all experienced in this side of social media and content creation, more specifically in the music industry where we like to sing. Huge rant. We're looking at 35 minutes here, but if you are here until the end, thank you so much for hanging out with me. Thanks for looking at uh, some of the things I'm looking at and Thank you for coming to my TED Talk, listening to some of the negativity that's going around. 
and listening to me ramble on about music and what it's like to sing in the TikTok music industry. And like I said, I think it's in a great place and we're still moving up as far as popularity, as far as people venturing into TikTok and creating on their own. If you are a new creator, it keep doing it. You are awesome. Your voice sounds great. Don't listen to any of the haters. Keep pushing forward. That's about all I have to say at this point. Um, I just wanted to not only clear some things up, but share my thoughts on the TikTok music industry, more specifically the vocal industry where we sing and what's going on in it address some of the toxicity, negativity, and hate, as well as some of the, and present a rebuttal to some of the biggest arguments and negative comments on this side of TikTok. And uh, yeah, thanks again for sticking around and listening to me ramble. And this has been Ethan Drew, and I am signing off for the day. Love you. Take care of yourselves, and we will see you in the next one. Bye! Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in today. This video was made possible by wonderful patrons like Miss Nancy Flesher. If you're interested in getting audio shoutouts or video shoutouts at the end of my videos, make sure you hit the link in my description to go to Patreon where you have that ability. Thank you so much for watching again. I love you. Take care of yourselves and we'll see you soon.